I decided to make a video so that we could do the unacademic way to uh, work with serial dilutions. It get, gets the job done. You do need to know academically how it's performed, but this is just um, the way that you would see it done in the lab. So we will start with a times two serial dilution. It's very important that when you're doing dilutions on a test, go ahead and make up your tubes on the paper. It makes it so much simpler. You don't want to get too caught up in what your final dilution is. Do one step at a time. So if the um, question asked you times two serial dilution and said you start with let's say a 1 to 10. A times 2 serial dilution does not mean that the first tube has to be a times 2, a 1 to 2 dilution. All that means is that once you take from this first tube, you're going to make times 2 serial dilutions. So every tube after that has to be a 1 to 2. So in here we have a 1 to 10, which could be, to get that 1 to 10, it would be something like 1 microliters of sample to 9 microliters of diluent which would end up being 1 microliters of sample over a total amount of 10 microliters. And that's a 1 to 10. So this is tube 1. We're going to say 3 tubes, just to keep it simple. So if I'm saying a times 2 serial dilution, I know that each of these tubes has to be a 1 to 2. Times 2 serial dilution is one of the easier dilutions. It always means the same amount of sample to the same amount of diluent. I could have 500 million trillion microliters of sample and I would have 500 million trillion microliters of diluent. We're going to start with, we're just going to use 200 microliters of diluent. You would take your pipette, put your tip on, go into this, and you would go ahead and in tubes 2 and 3, you would put 200 microliters of diluent. You could go out farther, you could go out to infinity, and you would put 200 microliters of diluent. <clears throat> if I said use 200 microliters of diluent. And this is, now we're going to focus on the next step. I know in each of these tubes it's going to be a 1 to 2. I put 200 microliters of diluent in, which means I'm going to have to use how much sample? That's right, 200 microliters of sample. I go from the tube before. 200 microliters of sample. 200 microliters of sample. Keep, I would keep going. I've done that step. Now I need to know, again, what was in each tube. This had a 1 to 10, but this tube was a 1 to 2. This tube was a 1 to 2. But that's not our final dilution, is it? Because this is not just diluted 1 to 2, because I keep taking from the tube ahead of it, which is already diluted. And this is where you do your multiplication. 10 times 2, and here's a 1 to 20. 20 times 2, and here's a 1 to 40. So tube 1 is a 1 to 10 dilution. Tube 2, the final dilution, is 1 to 20. Tube 3, the final dilution is 1 to 40.